And everybody said, Amen. Amen. See, Jesus said, listen, if any two touch and agree, it'll be done concerning anything on earth, it'll be done by our Father in heaven. And see, that word agree means to make the same sound. Amen. Amen. And so I want to tell you, listen, the Lord does not call storms. How many of you know that? Jesus ain't going to stand up and rebuke something that his father tried to start. And sometimes people walk around acting all crazy, talking about God sending storms as judgment. That is a lie. Do not, listen, do not receive that. Amen. Anybody ever heard that stuff? Always judgment from God. No, 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 no. New covenant judgment. John, Jesus said this in John 9, that the father came. This is the judgment that he came to bring. That those who claim to see me may blind and those who are blind begin to see. It was a condition of the heart. And what he did is he was coming to bring conviction to where in humility we could see what God wanted to do in, in the midst of what the enemy was trying to work against us. Because how many of you know we live in a fallen world? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Romans 8 says that the... Gr- Rome, yeah, that's right, buddy. Rome, Romans 8 says that all of creation is groaning for you and me to be made manifest. Amen. Because Elijah was a man with a nature just like us. It says that he prayed and it didn't rain and he prayed again and it did rain. And see, God doesn't want to just give you authority over your day. God wants to give you authority to begin to speak to things and see them come to nothing. Amen. In fact, it said that Abraham, who being like God, spoke to things that did not exist as though they did, and he gave life to dead things. And now I'm telling you, how many of you know there's power in the words we speak? It says in Proverbs 18 that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Amen. And so we want to be a people who speak blessing. We want to be a people who speak life. We don't want to call it as we see it. We want to call it as he sees it. Right, William? Come on. And so this morning, we've got some, some wonderful friends here today from our community food bank that you're going to hear, hear from in a little while. They're going to be here as well to give you some practical information for those who may not, be yet, who may not have yet signed up uh, for food stamps, but qualified. They're going to let you know how you can move forward with that. And so again, they're going to be sharing a little bit um, uh, when we get done with the message this morning. But how many of you are looking forward to what God has to say today? Come on, how many of you are thankful that you don't just come here and get naturally fed, but you get spiritually fed? How many of you look forward to what we, we bring week in and week out that God is saying to you? Amen? Listen, we, everything we do here, we do because we love you. Amen? We love him and we love you and you are our family. Amen? Come on, we are family. Hey! Come on, all my brothers and sisters and me. Hey! I'm telling you, listen, I, I, now I do, I do have a question why I didn't get invited to any barbecues yesterday. How many of y'all are barbecuing and not inviting pastor? Come on, Sue. Yeah, I didn't she didn't barbecue. But, <laughs> barbecue Sue got a new do. Come on, let's thank the Lord for Sue. She said we go to the Brazilian and get that biz. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are thankful for Sue? Come on, Sue got the new do and loves that barbecue. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. This is a passage that many of us are familiar with. I'm going to zip through the first part very quickly because I want to give context about where we're going to go. Because there's actually one verse that was in my heart this morning for each and every one of us. And it says in John chapter 6, this course is talking about Jesus feeding the 5,000. How many of you love this story? It says in verse 1, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. They followed him because he healed the sick. How many of you are thankful that God is a healing God? He's a miracle working God. How many of you need healing in your body today? Amen. We're going to pray. Listen, we're going to pray in a minute and believe for God to heal each and every one of you. Every time we gather together, we see blind eyes, seeing deaf ears, hearing, we see tumors dissolving. How many of you are thankful for the miracle working power of God that he still heals today? And the same way he healed back then, he heals you today. But it says they followed him because of the signs. Verse three, and Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? In other words, he saw a lot of hungry people coming to his house. And see, Jesus's heart and our heart and your heart is to feed those who are coming in need. Amen. 
And so Jesus said, listen, they're coming and they're hungry. What are we going to do? Verse 6, he said this, he said to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Verse 7, Philip answered and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. In other words, he said, we don't have enough money to buy enough food to feed everybody here. And I want to tell you, whenever you look at what you have in the face of the opportunity before you, what you have will always look like not enough to meet that need. But whenever we say yes to Jesus and we give to God what we've been given, how many of you know he can multiply it to become more than enough? You know, as a church, we didn't have the resources to do all that we do now when we began. We just said yes. And then we just followed his lead. Amen. Amen. It goes on and says in verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five biscuits, five barley loaves, and two small fish. But what are they among so many? In other words, one boy's lunch, and you have 5,000 men and their families. And so in truth, there was about probably twelve to 15,000 people. All right, and that's if the families are just families of two or three, maybe even more than that. You know, the, the, the city of Irondale, we did a census of the city of Irondale. We've got about 12,500 people who call Irondale home. And so this would be the equivalent of us going down to McDonald's, getting a Happy Meal, and feeding the whole city from that burger, that fries, and that little drink. Amen. And how many of you know, when you look at that, it doesn't look like enough But I'm telling you, whatever you give to God is always more than enough. It says, and then he says, there's a lad here who has five, five loaves of bread, two small fish, but what are they among so many? And oftentimes we look past what God has given toward what we need. But I want to tell you, don't look past what you have to what you need because you'll never have more of what you want until you're thankful for what you have. How many of you know that? You'll never have more of what you want until you're thankful for what you have. Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the field, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Why did he have them sit down? Because divine order brings exponential increase. Divine order brings exponential increase. Have you, ever, have you ever been making a meal and people come in, maybe they're coming in from playing football or basketball or playing outside or doing something like that, and all of a sudden they come and they just start scarfing down everything that you put on the counter before you even get to put it on a plate. And then there's like this trail of crumbs everywhere behind them, you know what I'm saying? Because in their hunger, there was waste, okay? And that's one of the reasons that we strive even here as a church to have divine order, to have things set up in a way that it cannot just be beneficial to you, but it also can be a faithful steward of what God has given to each and every one of us. How many of you are thankful for divine order? Does anybody like confusion? No, we like order. Amen. And uh, verse 11 says, and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, say give thanks. When he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. In other words, everybody got to eat until they were full. Isn't that a good day? Come on. It's like a Holy Ghost golden corral. Hey, I love the golden corral. Come on, the golden trough. Amen. Verse 12. So when they were filled... He said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. So that nothing is lost. See, Jesus was modeling to us stewardship. And one of the things that I'm so, I'm so encouraged by each and every one of you is that when, you, when we come here, you don't just think about what you're going to make, but you think about how you're able to give away and to bless your neighbors. Amen. How every one of us knows someone who's in a greater need than us and that we can take of what God has blessed us with and then turn around and bless somebody else so that there is nothing lost. Amen. It goes on to say in verse 13, therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the signs that Jesus did, they said, truly, this is a prophet who has come into the world. And so because they saw how he healed the sick, they saw how they multiplied the food. They said, this really is the, this really is the son of God. He is a prophet who's come into the world. And guess what happened? A crowd began to come because of what he did for them. You know, verse 15, this is really where we're going. 
Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. I love Jesus. How many of you love the ways of Jesus? They were coming to make him king. They were coming to give him a place of authority in their life. And how many of you know, if somebody was coming to make a lot of us king, we'd probably be like, darn Skippy. Where's my crown? Where's my robe? Where's my Cadillac? Hallelujah. But Jesus, Jesus wasn't trying. He, listen, he, he didn't come to be an earthly king. He came as the king of kings. He came as the Lord of Lords. He came as the Prince of Peace because he wasn't there to fill their bellies as much as he was to fill their hearts. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, listen, God loves to fill our bellies, but even more, he loves to fill our hearts. He goes on in verse 16. It says, now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. They got into the boat and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was already dark and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. There was a storm, kind of like what's happening now out in the, in the Gulf and in the Atlantic with this wind of Irma that's blowing. And see, they, 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 were on a, they were on a little boat. They were on a little ship in the midst of this great wind and these big waves. And as they were in the midst of this great wind and, this big, and these big waves, it says, so when they rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid. Why were they afraid? Because they knew something was coming, but it didn't look like Jesus. In fact, the other accounts say that they were afraid because they thought a ghost was coming to them. And it wasn't the Holy Ghost that they thought. They thought, the, they thought that there was some sort, of, some sort of attack that was coming, something bad coming. And how many of you have ever been in a place where the Lord was walking on the water of your life and he was drawing near, but it didn't look like Jesus at first? It didn't look like the Lord at first. You're like, I don't know what this is, but I'm not sure if it's God. I love Peter. You know, Peter, when, when Jesus was walking on the water, everybody else was scared. They thought it was a ghost. And he said, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come. And the Lord said, it is I. And man, listen, Peter was jumping out of that boat. He was walking on that water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus and he looked to the wind and he got distracted by the waves, how many of you know he began to sink? But Jesus didn't say, oh, Peter, you have little faith and turn around and leave him. Jesus said, Peter, I love you. He grabbed his hand and he pulled him up. And that tells me that no matter where we are, in our life, no matter what we've stepped out into when we feel like God is leading us, as long as we keep our eyes on him, we'll rise above our situation and our circumstance. But I can also tell you because of the goodness of God, even if for a moment you take your eyes off of him, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always extend a hand of grace and a hand of mercy because he's not here to give a hand out. He's here to give a hand up. Amen. How many of you are thankful for a hand up? And so he was drawing near on the water, and they didn't know that it was Jesus. They just knew it was something coming. How many of you had a sense in your life that something's coming? How many of you have felt the, the shift in the air? How many of you have felt a change and a shift? It's a holy shift. Come on, say holy shift. Holy shift. Be careful when you say it. Make sure you get that F in there. Holy shift. That means things can be going this way. And it seems like all hell's breaking loose. And then all of a sudden, all the heaven shows up in the midst of hell. It means people can be talking about you, but instead of listening to the words they say or checking their Facebook status, you begin to bless those who curse you. You begin to love those who oppose you. You begin to say, how can I be the difference maker in their life? I want to tell you, there is not just a shift coming, but a new season is here. A new season is here. And this is, listen, I'm telling you, we're coming in to fall, but it's not a time to fall down, fall back, it is, or even fall out. It is a time to spring forward in a fall season because there is a fresh wind of change that is blowing for your life that if you'll keep your eyes on Jesus, not only will he cause you to begin to rise up, but he'll cause you to walk on the waters of impossibility and to begin to partner in your life with that which looks invisible in the natural, but has been promised in the spirit. How many of you are thankful for new seasons? How many of you are thankful for new days? Listen, daybreakers and dawn makers. Pastor Jeff sang it this past Sunday. 
daybreakers and dawn makers. You know what those are? They're sons and daughters who know who they are and they usher in a new day for those who are in darkness. How you know there's a lot of darkness in the earth right now, isn't there? There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of people acting crazy out there. But you know one of the things I learned about darkness? is the darker the night, the brighter the star. The light always shines the greatest in the darkest of times. And when I look out here, I see a lot of, I see a room full of lights. I see, listen, it says in Daniel 12, 3, that those who are wise, like my buddy Robert, they will shine like the stars. I see shining stars. And it will instruct many in the ways of righteousness. And listen, I've heard a lot of people in Christianity talk about how we're the moon and he's the sun and we're supposed to reflect him. I want to tell you that ain't true. That's old covenant. Because listen, the sun came to live in you. You're not called to reflect. You're called to reveal. You're called to reveal. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. And so our life is not meant to be a reflection. It's meant to be a revealing of the king of glory and his glory. Amen. And so here, they, they recognize that Jesus was walking on the water. They recognized something. Someone was walking on the water. And in verse 20, Jesus said, it is I. Do not be afraid. And I want to tell you right now, in the stormy parts of your life, I want to tell you, it's not the devil trying to work against you. God is at work for you. God is going to take even what the enemy meant for your harm, and he's going to turn it around for your healing, for your goodness, and for his glory. He is saying, it is I, do not be afraid. Then verse 21, this is the verse that was in my heart for you guys this morning. It says, then they, how many, how many, how many people in here are a part of they this morning? That's you, that's me, that's us. Then they, then, then us, then we willingly received him into the boat. That sounds so polite. Well, come Lord Jesus and partake with us. Come and sit with us. You know, in the English Bible, it's just so polite and put together, but that that wasn't how it happened. The word willingly here in the Greek means they resolved or they determined. They made up their mind and they would not be denied. They they had conviction in their heart. Willingly wasn't just that they were open to God coming. They said, listen, we want this more than anything in our life. We've been in the storm without him, and we don't want to go through another storm without him in the boat. Amen. Because we know that if he gets into our boat, everything around us changes. It says that not only did they willingly receive him, but the word receive means to take with the hand to take possession, to apprehend, to lay hold of. In other words, they determined in their heart to grab a hold of God no matter what it cost them. They determined in their heart in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the sea, in the midst of the wind, in the midst of the waves, that no matter what it took, they were going to lay hold of Jesus and that Jesus was going to come into their boat. How many of you have been in a place where you said, listen, I don't know where I'm going, but I know, I, I know who's going to get me where I need to go. Listen, we, we gotta, if we, listen, if we don't have Jesus in our boat as a people, we're going to sink. If we don't have Jesus in our boat as a city, we're done. If we don't have Jesus in our boat as a state, listen, if we don't have Jesus in our boat as a nation, we sunk. But I want to tell you, Jesus, is, listen, not only is he not done with America, he ain't begun yet with America. We're about to see the hand of God's goodness and his glory manifested in and throughout this nation in a way that's going to cause all of the naysayers to become yaysayers. Because it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. How many of you know that? And he's a good God. But it says they willingly received him. They determined in their heart to lay hold of him no matter what it costs. And this is what I love. And immediately, say immediately. Immediately Immediately means it's a suddenly. How many of you are thankful for the suddenlies of God? That means it was this way, and now it's that way. It looked like hell, and now heaven showed up. Immediately, the boat was at the land where they were going. And so here's what happened. We see that they get into the boat, and they're supposed to cross over the sea to Capernaum. They get into the boat. The wind is blowing. The waves are rolling. They row three or four miles. I know they weren't even halfway across that sea yet. And then the wind showed up, the waves showed up, and Jesus showed up. Because the Prince of Peace will always manifest in a storm. And what happened was, it says when they determined in their heart to lay hold of him and for him to come into their boat, no matter what it cost them. Because how many know they had to move some things around to make room for Jesus? 
There may be some things in our life that we need to move around to make room for him to come into our boat, to come into our life, to come into our, our homes, to come into our jobs, to come into our families. How many of you are ready to move some things around so Jesus can get in the boat today? It says immediately they were on the other side. They were here, and then all of a sudden they were there. They were, they, were, they were not even halfway through their journey looking at where they needed to go, and they said, there's no way I can get from where I am to where I got to be. And then Jesus got on the boat and answered every question like that because immediately they were on the other side. And I'm telling you, listen, I don't know where you are in the waters of your world. Some of you may be in a situation where it's felt stormy, where the winds are blowing and the waves are rolling. You may be like them. You've been rowing and rowing and rowing and rowing and rowing your boat three, four miles. And it just feels like you're doing all this stuff. You're trying as hard as you can. But no matter how much you do, it ain't moving you forward. I want to tell you, Jesus is walking on the water. He's drawing near to you this morning. And if we, like those disciples, will determine in our heart to lay hold of him, to say, God, I want you in my boat. I don't want to weather the storm without you. I don't want to go another minute without you. I don't want to live another day without you. Get in the boat. If we, like those disciples, would invite him into the boat, I want to tell you, you'll go from where you are to where he wants to take you like that. Amen? So I want to ask you a quick question. If you're here this morning and you found yourself like that, you found yourself rowing, doing everything you can, and it's not moving you forward and where you're called to go. The winds are blowing, the waves are rolling, and you say, listen, I just need Jesus to get into my boat. I, not only do I need to get to the other side, but I want him to take me where I'm called to be. On the count of three, you're going to raise your hand. And here's what I'm asking. Your life is your boat. Your heart is the heart that he wants to make home. And so if you're here this morning, you say, Jesus... I want to make you the Lord of my life. I want, I want you to make my heart your home. I'm tired of paddling. I'm tired of trying to do things by my might and by my power and not by your spirit. I'm tired of just doing everything that I can and leaving me empty at the end of the day, more discouraged and more frustrated. Jesus, more than anything, I want you to come into my life. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my king. I want you to be the prince of my peace in the midst of this storm. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. If that's you, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. If your hand's up, go ahead and stand up. If your hand's up, stand up. Listen, if that's you, I've got to, we've, got to, we've got some things I want to give you. If that's you, listen, if you're, if you're saying, listen, that's me, I want you to stand up right now because I'm going to ask you to stand up. And I'm going to, guys, if we could go ahead and get those boxes of Bibles, praise God. We ran out of Bibles last time, but we got them back now. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're here this morning, you're saying, listen, I, 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 want, I, I don't want to leave here the way that I came here. I'm asking Jesus to come into my heart today. Come on, if that's you, just stand up wherever you're at. We're all going to pray together. But listen, I want it to be very clear that what we're responding to is the invitation to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And it doesn't mean that all the storms go away, but it means you'll never go through a storm alone again. Amen? Listen, if you're not standing, can you join with me in stretching your hands out to each of these folks who are standing up right now? And let's all pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I give you my life. I embrace your grace and I receive your mercy. I thank you that because of what Jesus did, I'm not what I've done, but I'm what he did for me. I'm a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And now I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Hey, if you're standing, go ahead and slide out to the aisles and come on down. We've got ushers who are going to come up and give you a Bible. Come on, if you're standing, come on down. We want to make sure we give you a Bible. Listen. The Bible is the greatest gift next to the Son of God and the Spirit of God. Come on down up front if you could. Just so we make sure we get everybody a Bible who needs a Bible. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, let's thank the Lord for all of these amazing brothers and sisters. Come on. Hallelujah. And we're going to move into healing here real quick. Again, how many of you need healing in your body? Come on. Listen, right now, we're going to celebrate these sons and daughters right now. If you need a Bible, come on up so we make sure that everybody gets to you. Lord, we, we may need to pray to multiply them Bibles. Hallelujah. 
Hang on to your fish and loaves. We just need to multiply some new King James. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yep. We're going to pray for him. Okay. Yep. We are going to pray for him then. Absolutely. Psalm 107, 20 says that God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Come here. Give me hugs. I love you. I'm so proud of you. You love me more. Hallelujah. Come on now. I see you love and I raise you. Amen. High five, Sybil. Hallelujah. Boom. Hey, hey. I am going to pray for your heart. Tell you what. I'll pray for it right now. What, what needs to happen in your heart? A clean heart. Clean heart? Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Ezekiel 36, 26 says he take the, whoa, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's already on her, Carter. Watch out. In Jesus' name right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, he'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a new heart of flesh. Amen. Won't he? Hey, you feel that? What happened there? She get it bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, help, help me, dear. What happened? If anybody tell you anything that you accept that you are a man of God, they lie. <laughs> Come here. I love you too. Amen. She said, if anybody tells you you're, you're anything but a man of God, they lying. Come on, Gloria. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Debbie, God bless you. Hey, let's thank the Lord for all of our amazing brothers and sisters in Christ. Come on, we, re- we join with heaven and celebrating salvation, transformation, healing. Amen. Now, if you need healing in your body, raise your hand. Okay, I've got, I've got ministry team here that has trained and ministering healing to you. If you need healing in your body, raise your hand. I'm going to ask all of our ministry team to come in and begin to just start finding people who have their hands up. Because how many of you are thankful that when Jesus fills your heart, he also desires to heal your body? Come on in, Jace. I need you to pray for some folks. Come on, if you're here today and you need healing in your body, raise your hand until somebody gets to you. Also, if you're sitting by somebody who has their hand up, go ahead and go to them. We've got a lot of folks up front who need healing. Come on down. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, D, come with me. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, we release healing in Jesus' name. (laughs) Healing in Jesus' name. (laughs) Healing in Jesus' name. (laughs) There it is. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Shoot, bop, hop. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Be healed. Be healed. Oh! Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Come on, Adrian. Come help me pray for some folks. Come on. Come pray for some folks with their hands up. Hallelujah. Get them, girl. Get them, girl. Listen, Adrian has the Holy Ghost. We'll pray. Hallelujah. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we love you. We thank you that you are our healer. Shumbarabando, Jesus, right now. Shungarabondo, Kondore te te bombo. D, D. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, right now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Ooh, there it is, there it is. Ooh, 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 there it is. Ooh, mm, mm. Shakarabondo. Sarah, Sarah Wright, come here. I need your hand. Hallelujah. Put your hand right here, right, right, right between Mickey and Pluto. The Lord's doing a work right there. I don't know if you need a work. I, I just saw the Spirit of God moving right there in your midsection. This is Sarah. She's going to put her hand right there. Lord, right now we bless healing, creative miracles. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, Father. God, we thank you, Lord, for each and every person. Healing. Healing. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Okay, let me ask you real quick. Amen. Amen. How you feeling, Michael? I love you, buddy. Let me ask you real quick. If you need a healing in your body and somebody just prayed for you, and you, tell, you can tell a difference in your condition, either pain has left your body or signs and symptoms of infirmity and disease have gone, I want you to raise both hands up in the air. All right, and just begin to start waving them. If you say, listen, I had sickness in my body that is gone right now. Hey, come here. You want to dance? Come on, you look like, hey. You are precious. Hallelujah. Come on, anybody else? Listen, right now, take your healing for a test drive. Try to do something now you could not do before. If you, have, if you needed the Lord to move in your shoulder, start moving that shoulder. If you needed the Lord to move in your eyes right now, begin to look at something you couldn't see before. If you needed, he- if you needed healing in your hearing, begin to start checking that. 
I want to give everybody a minute just to check themselves out. Hallelujah. This can be this can be the last thing that we do, and then we're going to go ahead and transition. Okay, very quickly. Let me have it. Let me have your attention. Okay, if you're here this morning and you came and you you had recognizable sickness in your body, you had infirmity, you had disease, you had pain. And that pain is gone. Those signs and symptoms have diminished. If that's you, I want you to put both hands up in the air and just begin to wave them. Come on. Let's give glory to Jesus. Look at these. Look at this. He's a healing God. He's a miracle working God. Jesus. 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 Come on. Let's give him a shout of praise today. Come on. Let's thank him for who he is. Amen. Amen. Hey, and listen, I'm going to hand over to Jeff and Pastor Jeff in just one minute. He's going to introduce our guest. But Greta, I saw my girl Greta in the back. Greta, come on up here, girl. She get it. Bye-bye. Come here, buddy. I love you. How you feeling? I remember last year. Yep. This time I had a stroke. Yep. This month, this week. I remember that. A year ago. Yeah. I couldn't walk. Yeah. Couldn't talk. Yeah. Look at me now. <laughs> my man, Michael. Come on. Look at that. Hallelujah. Lord, increase healing, increase strength right now in Jesus' name. We just had a young man who, uh, who he, he came and he had two strokes, came, his face was completely paralyzed on the left side. And as he gave his heart to Jesus and the Holy Spirit filled him, that I reformed, it refashioned. And he went from being in darkness to being in light. The only difference was Jesus came into his heart. Amen. Greta, can you go ahead and just pray for everybody, whatever's in your heart. I just felt the waters of G bubbling up. Father, I thank you for the gathering of your people in this hour. Lord, I thank you that this is the hour, Father, where we walk in boldness. Yes. Even on the side of this room today, I felt like, like you guys are getting ready to run in a way that you have never known. So, Father, I thank you that you open the eyes of your people, Father, that they would see themselves as strong and mighty in this hour, Lord. Father, that they would not go in the strength that they have known, but that they would put on the strength that you have for them. So we say yes and amen to newness. We embrace this season, Father God. We put on the mind of Christ and we go forth in doing all things that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And even provision. Father, I yes. thank you for provision. I thank you, Father God, that we would be not be a people that would strive to reach, but we would open our hands to receive yes. what you have for us, Father. We say yes, God. Yes. However you desire to do it, Father, we say yes. yes. We say yes. yes. In Jesus' name. Come Amen. On. Come on, we say yes. yes. Come on, we say yes. yes. We say yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, and just before I turn over to Pastor Jeff, listen, if you're here this morning, you gave your heart to Jesus. I want to encourage you. Listen, we've, we went and we bought bathing suits and shirts just your size. William says the water's fine. He got healed in there. And uh, but we listen, we got shorts. We got shirts. We got towels for you. We've got the water baptism set up, 88 degrees. It's nice. Hallelujah. But listen, if you're here today and you say, listen, not only did I ask Jesus to come into my heart, but I want to bury the old man. I want to forget the former things. I walked in holding some stuff that I don't want to walk out here with today, and you want to be baptized. We want to make that available to you. Now, listen, let me make it clear. Sometimes people say, well, if I get baptized here, is that like a commitment to the church? No, it's a commitment to Christ. Yeah. We're simply here to serve you and to honor him. That's it. But if you're here today and you say, listen, I've had some bondage in my life that I just haven't been able to let go of. I've got some things that I need to have buried so I can be raised in newness of life. I want you to raise your hand right now if you want to be water baptized. Anybody else? Want, anybody want to be water baptized? If so, listen, we've seen so many people healed, delivered in that water. We've seen, we, we, we have doctor verified people being healed of HIV, hepatitis C. Terry is here. She had a cataract come off of her eye in those waters of baptism. We've seen people get brand new livers, brand new knees, cancer leave their body, brand new backs. Because listen, if we really believe we're buried with Christ and all sin is done away with, then sickness should follow the sin. Amen. Amen. Because if sickness is part of the fruit of the fall and we're a new creation, then sickness no longer can rule and reign in our natural bodies. And in the same way that Jesus lived a perfect life, died a perfect death, went into the tomb and came out a new man, 
How many of you know, John says that as he is, so are we in this world. And when you go into those waters, it's like going through that burial process saying, you know what? I'm not going to be who, I'm not going to be the same me on the other side of this water. But when you come up out of that water, it's just like when Jesus came out of the tomb, you're brand new. And it's never failed. I've never, it's, I've never not seen somebody come out and not look like an absolutely brand new person on the inside and the outside. So if you're here this morning and you say, you know what? I need that. I need that fresh start. I need that new day. God bless you. Just raise your hand and we want to make that available to you. You will not lose your place in line. We're gonna, we, we've got it ready now to where we can, we can just take you over as they begin to call numbers. And again, it's something that... If, 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 if it's in your heart to do, we want to make it available to you. Is there anybody here that your, your heart is beating going, that's you, that's you, that's you. Anybody here? Amen. Well, we love you guys. We know that so many of you have already been baptized here. You know, in 2016, we saw over 1,600. We, get, we were able to purchase and give away over 500,000 pounds of food. That's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. To 5,000 families feeding 15,000 people. But you know what matters to me the most? 1,600 got saved got water baptized, and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And so many of you are a part of that. Amen? And so we love you. We bless you. As a reminder, we're doing one mega food distribution a month now. It's always going to be the first Tuesday, and we're going to be doing some other community outreach in the latter part of the month. But can we go ahead and thank the Lord for Pastor Jeff?